strong winds and the dry conditions, it can still be a recipe for disaster. Is that what you'd have to do like before like, yeah. broadcast and stuff? Yeah, yeah. you should go A E I O U. So earlier this year, we saw and witnessed uh, the devastation of the Palisades and Eaton fires that came uh, barreling through the Pacific Palisades and Altadena communities. We got impacted right here on UCLA's campus as well, with classes getting moved to remote and a lot of faculty getting impacted as well. So as an atmospheric scientist, it'd be nice to get a good overview of you know what happened that day. Um, so what were those weather conditions that play a role in wildfires? Yeah. It helps to ignite the fires, spread the fires, how fast is it moving, adding oxygen to that fire to make those flame lengths even larger. And so uh, the main key variables that we look at are relative humidity. So how yep. much that's how much moisture is in the atmosphere, it. right? Yeah. Is it really moist? Does it feel sticky or is it really dry? Uh, two is temperature. So how warm is that air temperature? And the third are the winds. Yeah. So what is it that makes it so common uh, in California? We have two main fire seasons. One in the summer, which is driven by the air temperature, so really hot air. Yeah. Uh, the second is fire season in the fall and the winter, and that's driven by what we call Santa Ana winds. Yeah, I feel like I hear about that a lot. It's this region of high pressure that's over the state, roughly around Nevada, and it circulates in this clockwise rotation air from the east towards the west, towards Los Angeles. Yeah. But that air is coming in from a really dry location and then it has to move up over the mountains and then it sinks down on the leeward side of the mountains yeah. and when it's sinking that air mass compresses and it warms so think about it we have dry air we yeah. have warm air and we have very fast moving doesn't air. sound like a good recipe we know that they're really common in california now but what made it so different uh, with these la fires specifically right yeah we we see if like fires are a natural part of our ecosystem yeah. what made this one so particularly different is that usually that high pressure is around the nevada area bringing yeah. those easterly winds this high pressure was located more towards the north and as a result, instead of having this easterly flow, we had this northerly flow. Uh -huh. Okay, what does that mean? It yeah. means that the winds intersected the mountains at a perpendicular or at a 90 degree angle. So the yeah. way that the, the winds intersected the mountains pushed a lot of the winds up into the atmosphere, um, bringing a lot more energy down towards uh, the, the that's wind. That's going to increase that like, wind speed coming in, right? Yeah, because yeah. most of the time with the Santa Ana winds, the stronger winds are bouncing around in the atmosphere, I like, a, you know, in a more stable layer higher up in the mountains. But in this particular case, because of the way the winds intersected the, the mountains, yeah. that energy was brought all the way down to the foothills uh, and yeah. that brought really strong winds to the downtown core. So kind of speaking on that day, it'd be nice to know like kind of like what your day in the life felt like on the day that the wildfires broke out, especially as an atmospheric scientist. The Hughes fire affected where I live, so we actually had to evacuate. And oh, that's wow, the yeah. first time that it wasn't a mandatory evacuation, but you know, knowing so much about fires yeah. and about <laughs> the uncertainties in weather forecasting. You never know where they're gonna jump. I'm like, that. I ain't like stay home tonight. <laughs> you got just that bag packed, ready to go. Yeah, like yeah. I'm not like staying up, gonna be watching like the wind trajectory and, and <laughs> if it shifts in direction, like, oh my God, like. Cause I was in a place where I, thankfully I didn't have to evacuate, but you could okay. see the fire from my apartment. Yeah. And I was getting all those evacuation warnings and it was a bit unsettling cause you're yeah. not sure if it's time to go, if it's time for you to maybe yeah. stay put. Um, but yeah, definitely brought a new perspective on it. You don't know until you're in it. Like, would I have done things differently? No, I win, but I was surprised at the like how prepared I was, like how yeah. ready I was just like, let's go, I don't care. We're not under a mandatory evacuation warning, but I felt confident enough to be like, given my current environment, where yeah. I'm in, you know, my family. And what you know dynamic. too. So yeah. like you know 
how fast and how unpredictable it can be. So yeah, it'd be interesting to know, have you ever experienced like weather phenomena or something kind of similar to what we experienced? So we have experienced similar weather conditions like this in the past, right? And this was back in 2011. So those yeah. winds were like gusting to over 100 miles per hour. Wow. Yeah. But the difference there is that the fuels, the vegetation, what the fire was burning was not as dry as we've I seen see. it this time around. So even though the winds were really favorable for the development of fires, the fuels weren't dry enough. So yeah, yeah, if they're not dry enough, it's not going to ignite as bad exactly. as it did earlier this year with that. Yeah. Yeah, so this is so great. I was I'm so excited that we had the opportunity to share, you know, the meteorology behind the yeah. LA fires and like you know what was really happening yeah. there. It's nice to get a chance to kind of talk about and get to know the science behind it too. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much. This is great. Yeah, um, thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah. See you later. See ya.